Okay, so I scored a little bonus from uh, taking over 15 years with the company that I subcontract to. They sent me a nice little uh, stipend to my regular income and I uh, went shopping. I bought a wading pool for my granddaughter and a birthday present for my dad and put some stuff on lay-by for Christmas and I got myself a present to go with the whole uh, crafting thing. As you probably know, I love my Dremel. It's a brilliant little bit of kit and there are so many, many add-ons that make it much more adaptable and I brought myself this puppy here. eBay have them for 80 bucks and a lot of other places have got them even more horrendous and stuff, but my local Bunnings, just under $55. It is the Dremel Workstation Drill Press Combo. Um, on the bottom, you can see all the units that it is compatible with. I'm running, a, there we go, a 3000 Dremel, so I'll be fine. And I found out recently, where is it? No, there, Dremel, a division of the Robert Bosch Company. Dremel, ladies and gentlemen, whoop, focus, are uh, part of Bosch, and Bosch makes some kick-ass toys. So, let's see what we get in the box. We get a piece of cardboard, and um, that shiny steel pipe that you can see. Okay. So there's a, um, a steel pipe, and I'm assuming that is the riser. Hmm, sounds like something in it. Okay. Um, there's the, uh, the unit that holds your Dremel tool and um, mounts it to that riser. Uh, this is adjustable so that the uh, the drill will actually act as a drill press or you can turn it as its configuration at the moment, 90 degrees and use it as a sanding disc. And um, it also has increments in between those two as well. So we have a bag of bits. Um, the base plate, which is a uh, aluminium Aluminium base plate. Manual. And warranty card. And that's what you get for your 55 bucks. Centimeters down one side and inches down the other. And obviously you can bolt it to your work surface. Okay. So. Warranty card can go right over there. Safety instructions. Operating and safety instructions. How about construction instructions? Oh my god, it's like Ikea. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, that does show that that steel pipe does have something inside it. It's telescopic. So we've already gone through our parts. We have a base plate, we have the whole head mechanism, which has got depth gauge on it and all other nice little goodies. Warning, read the un and understand the manual for the use of this accessory with the tool. Do not reach in the area of the spinning bit. Oh, that's bloody good advice, that, eh? <laughs> okay, so, shows us all the bits. Bang, there's a locking bolt that goes in there, so I'm assuming it's in. A bag of goodies. Suppose of plastic bags thoughtfully, particularly if you have little peeps. Okay, so we have a bolt and it's saying that the bolt goes in here. That's probably the stopper for the um, upright to lock it into place. There's a little channel there. Whoops. 
but the nut fits in. Okay. Step one, figure three. Grab the unit, loosen this off, loosen that off, and turn that to the upright position. Figure four, there's a handle that goes in the back here. Okay. This fellow. Same kind of deal as that. There's a nut on it that goes inside the housing. And I've only given it a couple of twists so I can feel the bolt already gone right through the nut. Okay. And then it says, put that away and grab this. Use your spanner. And remove the little rubber bits. Really? Mm. Now I know from um, watching a preview of this that these little rubber little rubber bits are uh, not reused so I have no compunction at all running a blade through that okay um, telescopic insert and it's one of those um, twist to lock jobs come on Pretty nice. I have you already twisted. There we go. So yeah, twist or oh. untwist. Okay. So that's that. And it's saying into the head unit first. to be there right so now we have the head unit mounted we can just tweak that to stop that from moving up and down and it's showing that that slots in there okay So that's the caddy that the Dremel itself sits in. That looks a bit sloppy, doesn't it? The next few diagrams on the bottom of the, um, are just for mounting it to the table, either the shame bench clamp it or bolt it, etc. And they're also saying to lock that off. But what I would do is I would drop the Dremel down and make sure that the center is center with the, uh, the plunge hole through the base plate. And then I would lock that off a bit. Why would they give you a spanner? Ah, oh, it's for the neck. Yep, it's for undoing the Dremel itself. And why would they give you a, a spanner that does not actually lock that bolt? 
What have we got? There we go. There's a pair of vice grips sitting there. They'll do in the short term. Just enough to Okay, so <laughs> and then of course it's just gonna pivot around there, isn't it? So that was a um, a moot exercise screwing that up. What is it next? We got to that page there. We have Okay. We have a crow's nest which has lots of holes in it. It actually sits on top of the uh, the shaft or halfway down the shaft to allow you to put your collection of tools for your Dremel in close reach. Is that still in the shot? There we go. So you can put all your tool bits that you're going to use regularly in there. There's also a couple of attachments there. There's a cable tidy. Then there is this little puppy, which is the bung that goes right in the very top here. And you'll see the notches in it. That's for keeping the um, power cable neat and tidy out of the way, as are these two clips here when your Dremel goes in to the unit. And it just goes in the top. Probably could use a little bit of love from a knockometer. And then this last piece here literally goes in the top like so to hang the um, flexi cord off your Dremel. So if you're using the flexible extension, it sits up the top there. There's a lot of sunshine behind there, but there you go. Okay, so that's it in its entirety. That's what you get. Okay, so now taking a closer look around here, this little notch here is designed specifically for the Dremel uh, lead light by the looks of things. There are smaller holes for the bits, and then on this side there are three bigger holes for the, the chucks, the uh, different diameter chucks. That slot at the back is where you keep your Dremel key. And like I said, that one there is for um, the collar. Underneath here is a screw collar. Hang on. This thing is supposed to tilt 90 degrees, isn't it? So we can unlock. And turn around. That there. You actually take the collar off the end of your uh, Dremel tool and insert the Dremel from the back here and then do that collar up around it. And like I said, the included spanner is to lock your uh, Dremel tightly in place. So, without too much further ado, let's um, set the Dremel in its new home and see if it likes living there instead of being hanging there. So, as I said, I, um, I use a 3000. It's my uh, preferred weapon of choice. And at the moment, I've got the Flexi on. So, uh, the Flexi comes off and... Um, so, there's the Flexi spindle put them both where they're safe the tool itself let's uh, tilt that back to the the uppy downy
Good, good. Now, um, the cradle here that is housing the head of it So there's a there are clips here to hold your power lead out of the way. Uh, as I was saying, the cradle that holds the Dremel gives you the ability to reach in and press your lock so that you can remove your bits. Wouldn't make much sense if the, uh, the cradle covered up that button. And you can also turn your tool 90 degrees to the uh, position I've got there. And there's a second slot. Okay. So it's a handy little drill press. Power cable is still plugged into that. That is really sane and safe working technique. The riser bar is if you are going to use. Oh, I didn't lock that off real well. <clears throat> the riser bar is if you are going to uh, hang the Dremel by the hook. Up oh, a bit further. Uh, you can hang the Dremel by its hook there and use your flexi cable, keeping the Dremel tool up out of the way. Uh, one of the other advantages, boink, is now that this is mounted on here, I can tidy up that cable a bit more and make it aesthetically more pleasing. Let's uh, do that. And there. Um, having that 45 degree lock on here means that uh, having that... It locks in 15 degree increments from straight up and down to 90 degrees. And there's a little lock on the back that you turn so that once you put it in the 15 there, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90 degrees. So at 90 degrees, you can put your bits in and use this as a buffer wheel as a polishing wheel. So as you're holding onto the Dremel, it all gives you both hands free to work. So there we go, that is the Dremel uh, drill press workstation. It is the 220-1, I think is the model part. Yes, 220-1. It's called the Dremel workstation. There you go. I kind of like it. Like I said, for 55 bucks from my local hardware store, not a bad little investment from a workstation and um, a present to myself for Christimus. Depth gauge that you can set for the depth of the plunge. Um, does feel a little wobbly, but um, I think because it's a Dremel and not a full-on drill press, that's not going to be um, an issue because you're not going to put an extreme amount of pressure on there. So there we go. Quick little 20 minute uh, video of my new addition to my workstation, the Dremel workstation. There you go.